Oh, that was a chaotic mess. <sighs> I just, like, I, I don't know. I, like, didn't look into if they changed their office because I haven't been there in a long time. And I just clicked on the thing that was in my voicemail. But, obviously, I should have thought about the fact that it doesn't always translate the address. And I was going to be, like, right on time. So, didn't really leave any room for error. I went to the... Realized that this is not the address. So then I went to... I just went straight to the address that I thought it was. Where my doctor that I went to was before. And that was the wrong doctor's office. And so then I left the office and went to the one that was correct, but I was already like 20 minutes late. And they rescheduled me for tomorrow. But I just, like being back in my hometown and I don't know, being in a wheelchair and feeling like I'm just sad all the time and it's not easy. And then there's quarantine and I just feel like I don't have the freedom because I don't, but freedom's in your mind. But it's just a lot harder to get out and like, I don't know. I'm just like, why did I move back to Washington? I don't want to be here. I don't want to face my problems. I just feel like I just destroyed everything that I was doing. But I needed help. I just didn't know what the help was. I thought like coming back and being around family. But it's just all what you make it. And yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm today, I was feeling really sad and scared and I was like, after I was leaving the doctor's office, I, you know, hated myself, hated who I am, where I am, what I'm doing. But then there was like this little shop and I needed to get my sister's daughter a present for her birthday. And while I was like buying it, I just felt so done with life and, you know, uh, socializing, trying to put on a front, trying to pretend like anything matters. And I thought about like, I don't think I can handle this. I can't even like, I can't even like feed myself, drink water. I don't care about anything. And I don't want to go to the store because I don't want to like face being in this town and feeling as sad as I do and then being in a wheelchair and feeling like people are looking at me because they know my story and they know everything and and I'm not strong enough to like rise above it right now so I don't want to go into a grocery store in California like I didn't know anyone and it was awesome and on top of that, there was Instacart because it was like 15 minutes to everything. Now I live 30 minutes out and I don't want to go into the grocery store because I can't not cry. And so I just don't get like more food. <laughs> if any food, I don't, I just don't eat because I don't care. And and that's the cycle and it only gets worse and worse. And I've been losing a lot of weight. And it's really hard to like stay on top of it and make sure I eat enough so I don't lose weight. That's all that really matters at this point for me is just, I don't wanna, 
I don't want it to show. Like, I don't want it to have to deal with it. But it's inevitable, you know. The longer you don't eat for it, the skinnier you're going to get. And on top of that, I, I don't want to just... I'm, I'm like scared of medications because I have gotten worse on them before and that's really hard to do because uh, obviously you have to take care of yourself and I'm already not really doing that so if it makes me worse if it makes me numb which that is not what I want I want to actually feel and live life and experience things. <laughs> yeah. And I was gonna go to see my friend this morning. I was like, okay, I got this. I'm going out there. So I'll just go see her after. And then I flaked on her every time because she has kids and a family and I'm like this so I don't really want to bring that around a family or anyone so now I don't know if I'm gonna go see her and what good does that do how is that putting in the effort to make it better and change the patterns why can I do what I need to do? And if I do it, why can't I just, you know, keep it together? It's hard when you've learned that it's your patterns. It's things that you have to put in so much work to fix. And then people can, you know, they can have their judgments saying that you're just living in it or you're not trying you're not doing the things that you need to do and that's all you gotta do is just get up eat exercise get fresh air well you know what have they been through it have they had to dig themselves out of these horrible patterns that happen because of a traumatic thing in childhood like they don't know they have no idea how hard it is and they'll never know. They might experience it later, like going through something. But when it's like strong patterns of a twisted up personality disorder from survival patterns growing up, that is not easy to undo and I feel like I'm screwed by depression. Like, I get it. You know, medication can help. But they also haven't been through that either. And they don't know how scary it is. And a lot of, you know, medication can make people kill themselves. It, it's a fact. Like, it can get really intense. And... It's hard, and I'm on my own. Like, I am alone. I know I have family. Everyone has their own lives, and I don't have my own family. I don't have someone that's like, reminding me that it's okay, and I'm not crazy, and I'm lovable, and all the things that like, can help help you not like overthink everything I don't go home to someone <laughs> and and I won't even I can't even allow myself to get close to someone I've blocked it out I always block it out I'm scared of it because it hurts yeah well I gotta figure out what I'm doing now <laughs>